Oh man, I haven't recorded one of these in like a month. I missed you, Carson. Carson's like, I didn't miss you. <laughs> okay, I've been avoiding this one because I know that my Irish and Scottish accents are going to sound exactly the same as my shitty British accent. But... All my accents sound the same. Except for Dr. Mercury, because I don't know what the hell he's supposed to be. How are your sleuthing skills these days, Jennifer? Are you and Carson up for a challenge? Definitely. What's up, Uncle Basil? As long as it has nothing to do with your stupid books on druids. Well, your Aunt Miranda's in a bit of a fix. She has to do a story on the annual All Britain Prevaricators contest, and she can't figure out who to interview. Prevaricator? What's that? A fibber, a fabulist, a fabricator, a falsifier, a perjurer, a pseudologist, plainly speaking, a liar. Aunt Miranda's covering a contest for liars? Weird. And difficult, too. She's having the dickens of a time figuring it all out. Perhaps you and Carson could give her a hand? Man, that lazy bitch wants us to do her work for her again? Jesus Christ. I mean, for sure, Uncle Basil. Let's go, Carson. We're on the case. Fucking lazy-ass bitch. Why don't you ever do your own work? God. Aunt Miranda sure does look puzzled. I wonder what all those notes are. Thank goodness you two are here. I'm in a dreadful pickle. My editors asked me to write his story on the annual All Britain Prevaricators contest held at the Phaeton Club yesterday, but no one will tell me who won. Why not, Aunt Em? Is it some kind of big secret or something? No, nothing of the sort. It's just that they're all a pack of liars. And I'm too stupid to figure it out. One of the rules of the contest is that none of the participants may tell the truth the entire time that the group is in London. It's a matter of pride with them. They're being most stubborn. I've managed to suss out the three top contestants from this photo taken just before the last fibbing round. Their names are Tommy O'Leary, Angus McPeel, and Lloyd Gregory. I've talked to all three of them, but it was like talking to madmen. I couldn't get a straight answer out of any of them. Don't worry, Anna. Carson and I are much smarter than you, and we'll take a shot at it. I bet we can unravel this mystery. Well, Jennifer is feeling really mean towards her aunt today. Aunt Miranda's notes include a schedule of events for the Prevaricators Club. Today's events include a lecture at the Imperial War Museum by Angus McPeel. The topic is Bagpipes, Secret Weapons of Destruction. Lloyd Gregory is speaking at the Armory of the Tower of London. The title of his speech is Why Tissue Paper Would Have Made Great Armor. At the British Library in the British Museum, Tommy O'Leary is giving a speech about Shakespeare. The speech is titled Shakespeare, Playwright or Alien Spy. Miranda, seriously. I think she makes herself sound way cooler than she really is. She's probably just like some no-name lowly reporter at some garbage newspaper. Colonel Sweeney lives next door to Uncle Basil. He's been a member of the Phaeton Club forever. What up, Colonel? The Prevaricators Club has held their annual liars contest here for the last 15 years. Quite a show, really. The top liars in each of the British nations come together to see who can tell the tallest tale. I thought Britain was all one country. England. What other nations are there? History lesson time. Oh no, the United Kingdom is made up of four different nations. England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Of course, many people just shorten United Kingdom to UK. Dreadful habit, really, turning everything into initials. What? You complain about some dumb shit, Colonel Sweeney. You're welcome to have a look at my atlas here. I just happen to have it with me. 
It has a map that shows the whole United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Great Britain is the name of the island where you now stand. Thanks. Can you tell us who won the lying contest? Get to the point. Sorry, Jennifer, I'm not a member, so I wasn't allowed in to watch the contest, even though it was held right here in my club. What is the Phaeton Club? And why does Colonel Sweeney own it? Colonel Sweeney's atlas has a map of the United Kingdom. I've heard of Scotland and Northern Ireland, but what the fuck is Wales? If we stand in London and look towards Wales, which compass direction are we facing? Uh... <laughs> oh, fail. I don't know where the fuck Wales is. Though for the record, I am one-eighth Welsh. No? West. Yay! That's right! Wales is west of where we are in England. Scotland is north. Northern Ireland, uh, Ireland is northwest, across the Irish Sea. Why can't I speak? Northern Ireland is northwest, across the Irish Sea, from the British coast. Thanks for the geography lesson. I will surely still get that wrong the next time I play this. There's nothing west, it's just ocean. That must be Tommy O'Leary. Let's see if he'll tell us who won the Liars Contest. Okay, this is my Irish accent. <laughs> Not even. Sure, and it was a grand event, but a Liars Contest? Whatever can you mean? It was the annual indoor fireworks display. Myself and all the rest at the Grand Masters were there, sparking up a storm. <laughs> Lucky charms. Top of the morning to ya. Why, we had sparklers spinning off the chandeliers and fire fountains spraying red, blue, and green sparks till the room was blinding bright to see. Indoor fireworks? Somehow I can't believe that either the Phaeton Club or the London Fire Marshal would allow that. And it was my dozen rocket salute as should have won the day, I say, but the luck of the Irish had slipped from me, and the man with the beard took the prize. Tommy O'Leary has black hair, a mustache, and blue eyes. He wears cufflinks in the shape of shamrocks. He's a giant stereotype. Book about shields and heraldry talks about how symbols were used to represent people and countries on different coats of arms. Countries were often represented in designs on shields by plants or animals. A lion or a rose could be used to indicate England. Scotland was symbolized by a thistle, a plant that grows wild all over the hills of the Scottish Highlands. The symbol of Wales are the leek, a large onion-like vegetable, and the red dragon that adorns the Welsh flag. Yay, onions. Ireland can be represented by the shamrock, or four-leafed clover. Top of the morning to you, Tommy O'Leary.